this is VODcast 3 of Unit 2. In this one, we're going to look at sedimentary rocks, just uh, as before. There are two ways that you look at sedimentary rocks so that you can identify them. You're going to look at their texture, and you're going to look at their composition. Composition-wise, it's a little tricky because uh, sedimentary rocks can form crystals of minerals. All right, just like igneous rocks are crystals that formed when magma cooled. You can have water evaporate away, leaving behind crystals uh, of, say, calcite or halite or gypsum. So you can have crystals and describe them as uh, coarse grain, fine grain, things like that. But normally, uh, composition-wise, you can have just that weathered material show back up uh, in forms of pebbles. All right, these pebbles inside this rock here are most likely igneous rocks that have been weathered away, then eroded, transported down river, possibly or in a landslide, then compacted and cemented back together. So instead of trying to in, uh, identify each one of these composition-wise, we can just say that this is classed. Class is just a bunch of broken pieces glued back together. Um, you can have fossils. Uh, that's a form of clast um, or actual plant material. All right. Difference between a fossil and plant material, this is the actual plant material still that just kind of glued together. It hasn't really changed much. But the fossils, those aren't actual the, uh, the shells. The, the shells have been replaced with new minerals. Uh, you could have sand grains or really small silt grains, but those are just class, broken pieces that have been stuck together. So composition-wise, you can describe it as being a mineral. Again, the common minerals, halite, gypsum, or calcite. And you could also go the route, if it's uh, depending on what you have, it's just describing what it's made of. It's made of a bunch of fossils in, a, say, a uh, uh, calcite uh, matrix. Uh, you could just describe it as a bunch of sand grains, uh, a bunch of large pebbles, uh, plant materials. That would be another way that you could describe its composition. It doesn't just have to be the minerals. The other property again is looking at the, the textures. Texture-wise, uh, you can have, again, crystals, just like we did before. So crystalline is a possibility. These are large crystals of calcite. You could also have clastic. This is a bunch of clasts that stuck together to form a new rock. So clastic is a common example of texture. Um, you can also have foliated. See how there are different layers on here? And you could argue that it actually has two textures um, or more. This is foliated. You can see the different layers. But you can also, if you look at it in the hand lens, or just feel this, it feels like sand, right? Because it is. It's rough. Um, it's composed of a bunch of sand grains that were stuck back together, and sand is just broken pieces of rock, most likely igneous rock, because you can't have really soft materials like the muscovite and the biotite. It won't survive the weathering and the erosion. But the quartz and the case bar, the pink stuff in here, uh, that stuff's really tough and can survive. So those are the common textures, class, uh, clastic, um, crystalline. You can even have uh, foliated. Uh, those are the common ones. They're not limited to that, though. Uh, one other thing that I do want to mention about sedimentary rocks, they are extremely important to geologists because of the fact they're the only ones that are going to contain fossils. And sedimentary rocks contain the most information about the environment in which they formed in. Just as we went through the different textures and described what they uh, could tell us about how an igneous rock formed, you could do the same thing about the textures and the compositions of a sedimentary rock, um, such as the size of class, whether it be really small like sand or silt or these giant pebbles. That tells you a lot about, say, the energy uh, that uh, of the river or the uh, mechanism that eroded it away and transported it. Uh, whether they're really round or sharp edged, like some of these in here, tells us how far it got transported away. 
Uh, it'll tell you what uh, actually did the transportation, uh, the environment, whether it'd be, say, look like seashells, so this definitely formed in an ocean environment, or this plant material could tell you that it formed in some kind of bog or swampy area, uh, or even we'll look at some of these others. Kind of looks like a giant turtle shell, but in reality, you've seen this stuff before, especially in the summer since it was so dry. If you go out in your, uh, your yard, you would have seen that the soil cracked uh, because it was so dry. Well, that cracking can be fossilized and preserved. This is just a fossilized mud crack. Or, if we take one more, this one, you can look at the side and see that it's got this up and down shape. This actually had preserved the uh, wave action of the water that it was formed in. So you could tell about, uh, if you knew where, exactly how this was found, the direction and the speed of the water uh, that could have uh, formed it. Uh, we won't go too much in depth though. I've got a uh, page that goes along with your lab that helps you identify how specifically each one of these different types of rocks for sedimentary rocks formed in a certain kind of environment. So that's all we need to go over. You can use this uh, information along with uh, everything else on your next lab.